right. Welcome everybody to another BDA Boxing Podcast. Broadcasting to you from the true north. Today on February 24th, 2018, we have a series of good fights. Right now, I think in about an hour, we're going to have one of the Smith brothers taking on a kickboxer. But for the most part, we're going to get right down to it. We're going to talk the Superfly card that's going to be taking place on HBO tonight at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, obviously. And there's also a lot to talk about. But before we get to that, if you want to join us, you guys know the drill. Go to Google Hangouts and send us an instant message via boxingdebate at hotmail.com. That's boxingdebate at hotmail.com. And, uh, yeah, well, first-time listeners, send us your email. That way I can send you the invite. It's only for one time. After that, you don't have to send me anything again. So we can talk about that. But before anybody makes their way into the Hangout, there's a lot to talk about about last week, last week's fights. I didn't get a chance to do a midweek podcast this week. So I have a lot to talk about regarding the... Brandon Rios fight, even though I know there's a lot of people that might think that there's not much to say about it, but there is. And there's also the David Benavides fight, the Ortiz Alexander fight. I'm going to tell you right away, Alexander Ortiz didn't watch that the whole fight. I tuned out about around the sixth round because I think that's when the, I think the Showtime card was already starting at that point. I was I was searching for a way to find it. So I didn't really have time to to end watching that fight. And apparently, you know, both guys, I think they look pretty good. They still look sharp. All right, first of all, let's go to the chat room and see what people are saying there. Pavel, shout out to Pavel, says, I'm testing too. Yeah, I bet you are. Pavel says, I assume that you skip Smith fight. Yes, I'm going to be skipping it. Boxing Fairy Tale says, "Hey, hey, guys! Shout out to Boxing Fairy Tale." Luis Catorce, shout out to Luis. Says, "Yeah, here with Triple G vs Canelo playing in the background." Aiden Morrison, shout out to Aiden. Says, "Microphone check. You better chickity check yourself before you wreck yourself." What's up, PDA? What's up, right back? Jehovah Mixe, shout out to Jehovah. Says, "Sis Cat. Gangsters 3 says, "No midweek hangout." Pavel says, I hope he's tried to prepare his gas tank. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're going to talk about that. Boxing Fairy Tale says, I have an inside about Loma Linares. Somebody here told the contract is 100% already signed. Well, now that would be good. That would be good news. That would be very good news. But who knows if, I, if, if that's real. And I mean, I hope that fight happens. I mean, wouldn't that be the first time the top rank... And Golden Boy do business in a while. As far as I remember, that's it's been a long time since they've actually done business together. So I guess we'll have to see what happens there. Oop, microphone volume. Gotta put that, boost that motherfucker up a little bit here. There we go. All right. So yeah, Luis Catorce says that would be great. That would indeed be great. I hope that fight happens. Because they're talking about Beltran versus Lomachenko, and I like Beltran. I think he's a, he's a, he's a tough fighter, very tough fighter. But man, I gotta wonder uh, just how just how good he he can be at this point. Uh, can he handle Lomachenko essentially? Can he handle his speed and the, the pace that that Lomachenko is gonna set? I don't know. I really don't know. I'm working with some audio properties here because I want to make sure the sound is good. You know, I never, I can never start out this goddamn motherfucking podcast the way I want. There's always a little glitch in the machinery. Uh, it's, it's not fun. It's not fun. I don't know what to tell you, but uh, hopefully I get this all sorted out. All right. Luis Couture says Pavel. I don't think Manny wants Crawford. Yeah, that's been the thing. Who, who really wants that fight? Is it Manny? Pacquiao that doesn't want it? Is it Crawford that doesn't want it? I'm, I'm having a hard time figuring this situation out. Alright, so listen.
let's get right down to it. I want to talk about Benavides. No, let's start with Garcia. Let me tell you something, and I know this is going to ru uh, ruffle a couple of feathers, but this is what I really believe. I think Dani Garcia is being underrated here. Now, you look at the way he took out Brandon Rios last week, okay? Okay, Pacquiao fought the prime Brandon Rios. He couldn't take him out. But then again, that was a prime Brandon Rios. So, okay, I understand he couldn't take him out. Then again, he fought him after two Alvarado fights. Those two Alvarado fights took a lot out of Brandon Rios, and Pacquiao couldn't stop him. Bradley stopped Rios, but it wasn't really... You know, it, it was more of Rios being out of shape, and I'm not saying Timothy Bradley didn't punish him, but what I'm saying is, it was more out of exhaustion, and, and Brandon Rios just not being in there, mentally. So he goes down in that fight. But in this one, Garcia took him out with an actual punch. Laid him out, and yeah, I think Brandon Rios could have continued, but the referee made the, the, the right move. He stopped that fight. And I know some people are going to say, oh, Brandon Rios, you know, he's done and everything. But hey, whether he's done or not, Danny Garcia took him out. The guy's got power. He still has very respectable power, even at 147. Uh, I just find out what the problem with the desktop audio is here. There we go. But yeah, he's got very respectable power. And I think people are underrating him. The guy, he plants his feet, he looks for the knockout, he's a good counterpuncher, he has a solid amateur background. Really, the only negative that most people have about him is his father. You know, his father's always in the background talking about big dicks and making racist remarks. In a way, again, I've talked about this before, it sells, but it can rob people, people the wrong way. I know it does to me. I don't necessarily enjoy Garcia's antics all the time, <clears throat> but it's boxing, man. You gotta sell yourself. You gotta sell yourself a product. And uh, Angel Garcia, yeah, he, he has his son's best interests at heart. So there is that to be said about Angel Garcia and the way he conducts himself. But regardless of that, Danny Garcia is a very good fighter himself. Again, like I said, I'll restate the attributes, power, counter-punching. He knows how to plant his feet. He's not all that bad defensively. He knows, and you know, he's been there with everybody. He's never been decisively dominated. So for people out there thinking, oh, this guy's just another bum, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I guess you would have to watch more of his fights to understand that he's actually doing a lot of good things in there. But um, here's a fight that I didn't think about. Because everybody's talking about Errol Spence against Porter or against Thurman or maybe even against Terence Crawford. But I never thought about him against Garcia. Now, I just told you that I think Garcia is underrated. <laughs> so this next statement might seem a little uh, you know, out of the loop considering everything I just said. But I think Errol Spence stops Danny Garcia. Now, you might be thinking, well, Thurman couldn't do it. You know, Matisse couldn't do it. Why, why is Spence going to be able to do it? I just think it's he, Garcia's style plays right into Spence's hands. Think about it this way and, uh, I, also. Okay. Fucking, what's his name? Peterson. Okay, somebody's screaming downstairs. Hold on. Goddamn neighbors. Every time they scream, and you can listen to it. I don't know if you can hear it now, but the fucking god. And every time I start, anyway, I'm not gonna complain. That's my 2018 resolution. I'm not gonna complain anymore. Too much complaining from BDA. It's all straight shooting, straight and narrow. But listen, I was saying Spence. He his style plays, or Danny Garcia's style plays right into Spence's hands. Spence is like a stronger, more skilled, and more powerful version of Lamont Peterson and a southpaw to boot. And what did Peterson do to Danny Garcia? Peterson didn't even start fighting until about the 10th round. And in the 12th especially, he was backing Garcia up, up against the ropes, banging his body, he had him all busted up. What do you think Errol Spence is going to do? And this is coming from somebody that thinks that Danny Garcia is underrated. That's just how highly I think of Errol Spence. Now, I know people like to say, well, Errol Spence is being overhyped, he's being overrated. And I would agree to a certain extent when it comes to people saying that 
it's just a matter of time before he cleans out the division. Like in most people, in a lot of people's eyes, once Errol Spence steps in there against Thurman or against Crawford or against Porter, he's going to knock them all out. That's the way they see it. First of all, I'm telling you something right now. Nobody's going to have an easy time with Keith Thurman. I'm just telling you that right now. Errol Spence isn't going to have an easy time with Keith Thurman. But I do think, stylistically, he's going to have an easier time against Danny Garcia. And now this is an interesting question. Whether I, you disagree or agree with me about Porter, I mean, Spence beating the shit out of Garcia. Here's an interesting, interesting question for you guys. And I was thinking about this. Does Spence's win over Keith, I mean, over Kelbrook, Spence's win over Kelbrook, is that better than anything Garcia has done throughout his career? Because, I mean, you could look at it both ways. I know somebody could say, well, Garcia, really, who did he beat? An old Morales? Khan, who's Chini? Matisse, who turns out, you know, this is what this is what people would be saying. He, you know, Matisse was overrated. He should have lost against Herrera, Garcia, that is. He should have lost against Peterson, and he lost against Keith Thurman. Though that's one side of the coin. The other side of the coin would be Spence, yeah, he beat Kell Brook, but really, how good was Kell Brook? If you want to just look at the resumes. Kell Brook, yes, he beat Sean Porter. But he did a lot of holding in that fight. A lot of holding. A lot of holding, a lot of stalling. And in between, some good counterpunch. So that's my question to you guys. Who has the better resume? Luis Catorza says, yes, I would say that Spence's victory over Brook is better. That's what he's saying. That's what that's what Luis Catorce is saying. And I can understand that point of view. Why not? You know, what do you think, Gaia? Fuck you. All right. That's Gaia 500. I know it's been out of commission. I don't even want to talk to it anymore. It's it's really become a super powerful computer now. I can't control it anymore. Don't even try to. And every once in a while, it chimes in whenever it wants to. And it just starts saying a lot of nasty things about you know people, about myself, ethnic groups, you know. Not good. But then again, hey, I started it. What can I do? I gotta end it somehow. But speaking about Spence, that's the thing. Like, you know, Precise Puncher was here. Precise Presenter, I should say. No, wait, what's his new name? Precise Puncher. Anyway, he was here. He's been here on the show a couple of times. And he was saying he doesn't ha rank that Algeria win all that high. Because he says Algeria was injured. Now, which fighter really goes into the ring 100%. Everybody's always has some sort of a, of an ailment or an injury. Nobody is really 100% all the time. That's just a reality. Spence was still able to beat, stop Algeri, something neither Pacquiao nor Khan were able to do. He stopped Peter uh, Spence. No, <laughs> what the fuck am I saying? Peterson. I'm mixing up the names now like there's no tomorrow. But anyway, yeah, he beat Peterson. Not Again, here's the thing. People were saying, well, he beat Peterson, so what? Peterson was smaller, older. Okay, but who, who else did that to be other than Matisse? You know, Bradley couldn't do it. Garcia couldn't do it. I mean, and, and, and yes, Spence did look a little bigger. But come on, you got to give the guy credit. Which other one? Do you think Keith Thurman could have stopped Peterson the way Spence did? You think Porter could do it? I don't think so. I think maybe Terrence Crawford could box circles around Peterson, but I don't think he stops him. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe Crawford could, maybe. But it's already been proven. I mean, as long as Peterson doesn't step into those, I guess those guys will really never know. It's all hypothetical at this point. Spence did a good job of stopping the guy. And he also stopped Keller Brook. Luis Catorce asks, is Bucho here? No, Bucho is, he should be back tomorrow, I think. But he's not here right now. Um... He's enjoying himself. And I don't know if he's going to be able to catch the fight tonight. Of course, you know which fight I'm talking about. The big fights on HBO. But yeah, going back to Spence. So I, I can understand both points. Yes, he's being overrated by some people that think that it's just a matter of time before he takes out everybody in the division and he's going to knock him out in below five rounds, under five rounds, which I disagree with. On the other hand, I think some people might be underrating him. They're saying, well, he hasn't proven himself yet. Well, come on. He stopped Algeria. He stopped Peterson. Both guys who are very hard to, to stop. 
or to look good against, really. And then he had the big win over Kell Brook. And that's the other thing I respect about Spence. He went overseas to take on the guy. And he has a fan-friendly style. He was looking to do damage and stop people. Let's see what people are saying in the chat room. Gangsters003 says, Yep, the expectation of Pacquiao is unreasonably, unreasonably high. Luis says, perhaps. Gangster says, the Walter division is overrated. Uh, listen, you got Porter, you got Thurman, you got Crawford, you got Spence. That's like a, that's a pretty good division to me. Is it being overrated now? Because everybody's been fighting each other and we're down to four guys? Maybe, but it's still a strong division. You add in Ortiz and Alexander, who I don't think they beat any of the top four guys, but they did look sharp, at least, in the last fight. You got yourself a pretty good division. Luis... Louis Blanc, shout out to Louis, says, yes, but Brooke was coming off a devastating loss. Again, very true. But you couldn't tell it from based off the first six rounds he had against Spence. And it's not like his eye all of a sudden broke by itself. Yeah, it was Spence who was breaking it, and it was Spence who was breaking him down with body shots as well. So you got to give Spence some credit here. Even if you do think that Kell Brook was finished... Even if you think that he was done, uh, that Golovkin, you know, ended his career, it's 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 still a pretty good win. Hamed is in the house. Shout out to Hamed. Gangster says, "Yeah, but Manny Pacquiao beat Jesse Vargas." Boxing Fairy Tales. Shout out to Boxing Fairy Tales. Says, Somebody watch Putin versus Tucker. I still can't find any video. I don't even know who those guys are. <laughs> Tube says Brooke was mentally and physically beaten by Triple G and jumped up weights plus down. Brooke was winning the fight up until round seven. Yes, he was winning, but guess what? He didn't win the fight. He got stopped. So you gotta give freaking Spence. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I understand where you're coming from, everybody, when you're saying that Golovkin softened Kel Brook up for, for Spence, but you gotta give Spence trouble. I mean, credit for, for actually going in there and doing the job, getting it done. Gangster says, when a 39-year-old boxer, Pacquiao, is one of the best in the weight division, then that division is not that good. But uh, that guy just lost a fight for, Christ, for Pete's sakes. How good? How better is he than Thurman and Porter and, and Crawford at this point? But then again, I don't know. I think maybe Crawford doesn't want to fight him. I think Crawford wants to fight him, though. I think he's itching for that big Pacquiao money fight. I would be surprised if he did. Pavel says, Hamed installed Holochrome. Oh, they're talking about how to watch streams. Corruption in boxing. Shout out to Corruption. Says, do I really want to see Spence's breast jingling around like a Chippendale? The IBF should give him dispensation to wear a mankin. <laughs> yeah, there's some people are saying that he's got bitch stints. Akuma's Deception. Shout out to Akuma. Says, BDA Boxing. Am I, am I the only one that thinks that Thurman is too fight fast for Spence? I could see him outboxing Spence. His only chance is a KO in that fight. I think Thur Thurman is too fast for Crawford as well. Now, I'll tell you something. I, I'd never heard anybody say that he was faster than Crawford. Or that he might be faster than Crawford. I've heard people... I mean, I will agree with you when you say that you, he might be better, faster than Spence. Spence is quick, but he's not lightning fast. Thurman really does have... I think Thurman is quicker than him. Crawford, on the other hand... Oof, that precision punching of his... And, the, and that he's got hands too to boot so I mean I mean I don't know uh, Crawford I don't think he's faster than Crawford worst case scenario let's compromise and say that they're both they're both equally as quick but I will agree yes I think he's faster than than uh, Errol Spence Luis Couture says, I'm not sure that a majority of fans think that Pac is the best in any division anymore. Maybe that's the perception, though. Tube says, Thurman gets so much hate nowadays from the American fans. So, uh, Louis says, sorry, I didn't salute you, BDA. I like your videos. And yes, I agree. You got to give Spence credit. Rod T. Davis in the house. Shout out to Rod T. Davis. And that's an interesting question when you really get down to it. I mean, who... How much credit should you give a fighter? It's not an exact science, but we gotta go with what we see. And I think that if Spence hadn't fought anybody, then you could say, yeah, he's being overrated. But come on, stoppage wins over Algieri, stoppage wins over Peterson, 
and Kellbrook. Sounds pretty good to me. I don't know. Could be wrong. Akuma's deception says Crawford is fast, but he's not that fast. His speed doesn't wow you like Thurman's speed does. And that's the thing about Thurman is he's not out there throwing, you know, eight, nine punch combinations. He throws one punch at a time. He lures you in with his footwork and then he strikes. Very underrated Keith Thurman. And again, um, who said that the, the majority of fans think as much? Fun? But yeah, the tube said that Thurman gets hate nowadays from the American fans. That's because Errol Spence is in the scene now. And a lot of fans now, they say, oh, Spence is in the building? All right, fuck Thurman. They threw him under the bus. And these are the same people that think Spence is just going to walk all over Thurman. I got to tell you, I don't see it. I don't see Thurman getting run over by Spence. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I could be wrong. You never know. Hopefully they get in the ring. Uh, I, I forget where I heard that, but I'd read it in Boxing News. Somebody said, Boxing Scene, I should say, and somebody had said that the Thurman Spence fight is not going to be happening this year. So again, that's a PBC for you. They're not going to make the fight that everybody wants right away. Although this time there might be an actual excuse because if you think about a Thurman coming off an injury, which is probably why he decided against fighting Jesse Vargas as his comeback fight because Jesse Vargas is not a tune-up. But then again, he should, probably shouldn't have called him out in the first place if he did indeed do that. Tube says Brook is mental. He faced Triple G and Brook, I think he means Spence, Spence. One after the other, two guys that are feared. Yeah, Brook is, is, is you got to give him credit. He is confident. He stepped in there and ended up biting him back in the ass. But at least he tried, man. He can live with he can live with himself knowing, hey, I tried, I didn't run. Although, if you think about it, it might not have been the smartest choice in the long run. But hey, hindsight is a mother... Oh, I'm, I'm not going to swear. Mr. Cox says, Thurman doesn't get credit because he's always injured. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Shout out to Mr. Coxie, by the way. Tube says, Spence, Thurman, and Crawford could trades, wins, and losses. I'm telling you, Errol Spence is good. Might be the best of the bunch. Might. But he still has to prove it by taking on Porter, Garcia, Thurman. And again, I don't fault him if he doesn't take on, on Crawford because that fight, you know, the Crawford's with, the P, uh, with top rank. Errol Spence is with PBC. How do you make that happen? It's not all that easy. Okay, Akuma's Deception says, I could I could do a Crawford Thurman fight going... I could see. I think he means I could see. I could see a Crawford Thurman fight going the same way the early part of Crawford Gamble went. The only difference is that Thurman is bigger and punches harder than Crawford. Crawford's chin is suspect. I'd like to know why you think Crawford's chin is suspect. Because I haven't seen him really... I mean, I know he got stunned a little bit against against Gamboa, but for the most part, the guy's very relaxed. Reverse Lee, shout out to Reverse. He says, I would join, but I'm busy. And by the way, speaking of Reverse Lee, Donny Nietes is going to be fighting tonight on the HBO Superfly card. And check out Reverse Lee's channel, YouTube channel, where he did a film analysis of Donny Nietes, the very underrated fighter who we're going to see fighting tonight. And we're going to talk more about it. But, uh, oh yes, and I also wanted to talk about David Benavides, who fought Roland Gravril last fight, I mean, last Saturday. And, um, hold on, let me check the last comment here. Covert Operative, shout out to Covert, says Thurman fought Garvia with bone spurs, but refused to fight Manny Pacquiao's leftovers, Jesse Vargas, injury free. Manny would school his ponytailed pussy. Hmm. I mean, listen, he fought Porter and Garcia, two top guys, and they couldn't school him, so. Maybe Crawford could, maybe Porter, uh, Errol Spence could. I don't know what's going on with me tonight, I'm to this evening. I'm, I'm mixing up the names. It, I hope it's not a, an early sign of something bad with my brain. Because let me tell you something, I don't do drugs, I don't drink. I do punch myself in the head though. Maybe that's got something to do with it. Reverse Lee says, where's Bucho? Listen, to you people out there asking, where's Bucho, where's Bucho? Do you really care where Bucho is? PDA is here, isn't that enough for you? Greedy motherfuckers, that's what I gotta say. Yeah, like Luis says, reverse, uh, Bucho is out having a good time. And when he says a good time, I don't think he means 
I don't think he means it in a dirty sexual way. Precise puncher, shout out to Precise. Is the only question about Keith and Terence Crawford is who runs from whom? Hmm. I don't think there's going to be a lot of running in that fight. I think both guys are just going to stay in the middle of the ring analyzing each other. But, I mean, he's right. I mean, both guys, when they fought the best opposition, they tend to move a little more than usual. Mr. Cox says Vargas is great. I think he beats Thurman. Well, there you go. I guess we... We could have seen how that fight would have gone if they would have fought each other. But um, apparently that fight's not going to happen, so... <laughs> what do you want to do? But I, listen, I want to talk about David Benavides last week when he took on Roland Gavril. And again, every time I got to do this, but it, it is what it is. 168-pound division. Let's look at the ratings at the 168-pound division. Let me move the mic a little bit here. All right. All right, so... Callum Smith, number three, again, my goodness. Real quick, Jerome Brammer, who is not fighting tonight. Chris Eubank Jr. is at number nine. According to the Ring TV ratings, Anthony Durrell is at number eight. Andrew Durrell, number seven, he's going to be taking on Usketagui. A rematch. James DeGale is still number six. Benavides now moved up to number five ahead of James DeGale. Caleb Truex is at number four. So I guess that Benavides at five pushes Truex to four. Colin Smith, number three. Ramirez, number two. Again, uh, why is he at number two? He shouldn't even... I mean, he was at number one. I didn't know this. Groves now is at number one based off his win over Eubank. Which really, in hindsight, a lot of people were saying Eubank was a hype job. So, does Groves really belong at the top after that win? Because, again, if, if Eubank Jr. was overrated, well, what does that mean? Why does that make Groves the number one guy? But you can see the ratings there. And Gavril against Benavides last week. First of all, got a shout out to Roland Gavril. That guy has has to have the, one of the biggest hearts in boxing. He was taking a beating in there. And it's not, it wasn't the type of beating where his head was getting snapped back and forth all the time, but he was taking some hellacious body shots. Even the shots that he was blocking, most of them were getting through, but he stayed in there. He stayed in there. He tried to make it happen. That's what conditioning and heart will get you. Hard work. Even though he was outgunned, he never stopped trying to punch. So I, I got I got a lot of respect for Gavril. Benavides, on the other hand, my goodness gracious, he showed that the first fight, there was something wrong with him. Either he hadn't trained properly or he had trouble making weight or something because his punch output compared to the first fight was astronomical. And obviously, I'm exaggerating. He wasn't throwing nonstop, but he was. there were times where he was pushing the pedal. You could see he was trying to, 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 to get that stoppage. I don't know how many people... Are, to, to knock Gavril out, to stop him, you're going to have to get one clean shot in there and take him out. Because the beating, it's, it's just the guy's too good. I mean, the guy's too good in terms of heart. Too much heart, too well conditioned. He's not going to quit. If you're in there against him, any other boxer that's going to step in the ring with him, just keep that in mind. You're, he's, you're not going to make him quit. Maybe his corner will stop the fight, maybe the referee will, but he's, not, he's never going to say, I quit. That's just the reality, and it, it must be scary, or at least frustrating, fighting a guy like that who, you know, you're gonna have to kill if you want, if you want to, if you want him to get dragged out of the ring on a stretcher. But Benavides has shown, in my eyes, that in this 168 pound division, he might just be the best, the, the most. He might have the best potential out of all of them to take over the division. Now that that's saying something. Because, all right, I'm getting a message from Reverse League. Hold on a second. Reverse, I'll, I'll put you in here in a minute. Uh, Durrell, the both Durrell brothers, very talented, just like Benavides, fast hands. And by the way, Andrew Durrell is training with Virgil Hunter now. We'll see what that does for him. Jerome Brammer and Chris Eubank Jr., bottom of the division. James DeGale, you know, he can be beaten. Sometimes he, he gets a little overzealous in there. Doesn't take guys seriously, and and he has a little bit of you know, endurance problems in there. Then again, what endurance problems did he really show against Butte, who might have been on something, against Porky Medina, who again might have been on something, and then endurance problems against Baidu Jack. But then again, Baidu Jack was on fire that night, so really, who who really knows about that? But Benavides, I mean, man, keep keep putting him in there against quality opposition and watch him soar. That's what I think. 
Nikki Holson. That's the name of the guy that's fighting tonight, or this evening. Uh, he's a former kickboxer, and he's been trying to spar. I saw a video of him a long time ago sparring Jaleon Love, and he's not a bad-looking fighter. I mean, again, it was just a sparring session, but uh, you got to wonder. This is a professional fight now. They're not going to be holding back. I don't know how how good he's going to look. But again, if I'm not going to watch that fight because I got to do this chat, this this show. But uh, I'm waiting for the for the HBO card. That's what I'm waiting for. It's going to be a doozy. So, since we got Reverse Lee who wants to come on, I'm pretty sure he wants to talk about tonight's HBO card. So, let's get right down to it. We'll talk about uh, other subjects later. Because there is a lot to talk about. I was watching, reading the news a little bit. So, again, if we do run out of... Of... <laughs> things to talk about regarding the Superfly card, we might move to another subject. There's plenty to talk about, let me tell you. All right, Reverse, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. First of all, Not how, sure are... how long I'll be able to talk, though. Don't worry about it. How are you, man? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing sensational. So. As long as you you said you can't, you don't know how long you're gonna be staying here. So let's get right down to it. Tonight's Superfly card. I know you're a big fan of the lower weight divisions. Uh, what do you want to start talking about? You want to talk about uh, Donnie Nietzsche first? Um, which whichever fight is first. I keep, I can't remember if the it was the Nietzsche fight or if the Valoria fight was first. That's the thing. So let me ask you this: Do you know if the Quadras fight is gonna be televised? I know the Quadras fight will definitely come before, will definitely be televised. Oh, you will? Okay, okay. Yeah, because there's so many I think, quality... I think the Val I think the Valoria fight is the one they're not televising. So it's going to be... I, like, the, I'm not sure. It'll either be... The one they're not televising will either be the Nietzsche's fight or the Valoria fight. Okay. What I'm pretty sure is the Valoria fight, because I saw a link that the WBA put up on Twitter that linked to the fight on Facebook. Right. Well, cover operative in the in the chat room, he's saying the Veloria fight will not be televised, so that's Yeah, what that's it's... yeah, that's what I would that's what I thought. Okay. Well which would you have liked to have seen the Veloria fight instead of Quadras or would you prefer to see Quadras? Um I would prefer, prefer to see Quadras and it just makes more sense since he's getting the mandatory title shot mm -hmm. against the two opponent against the two fighters in the main event. Yeah, and he's a he's a he's one of the big top names in the division, so it it would make sense for him to to be televised. Now, okay, let's talk about Donny Nietes because you've been high on this guy for a long time. Um, he's been champ for a long time. Now he's moving up, finally getting his chance on HBO. Uh, I know you did a film analysis about him and his fight against. Oof, I can't. How do you spell the guy's name? The the, the his last opponent, uh, Nan. His pa opponent. Yeah. Nan Patek for, for this fight? No, no, his last Nan opponent. Nan Yes, that guy, yeah. How did you find... How did you think he looked in that fight? He looked all right. He went through a little bit of rough... Of a, of um some rough patches. Mm -hmm. But overall, he had a pretty good performance. Rebecca, actually, his last fight was against Nan Tepech, too. Yeah, he looked pretty good in that one, from what I saw. Mm-hmm. Now, let me tell you this. Um... Reveco, he's been in there with a couple of good guys. You know, he's um, what's the word I'm looking for here? He's he's a he's a veteran. You know, he, he can push the pace a little bit. How do you see this fight going? Um, I pick I'm picking Nietes by decision. Mm -hmm. So not by stoppage. No, I don't think he can really knock out Reveco like that. I don't think he has the power. Well, Ioka was able to stop him. Do you think that was more of a fluke or? I think Ioka, Ioka, he's younger than Nietes because I think Nietes is what, 34 years old now? Mm -hmm. Also, he is a, he's bigger than Nietes. He hits harder than Nietes. Okay. Yeah, Nietes Plus is Also, not... was his second time fighting Rebecco. Right. Nietes is not a big, huge puncher. I mean, at least if you compare him to guys like Inoue or or even like uh, so wrong visa 
but he's a compact guy, well schooled. What what is it that you like about Donny Nietes? I like his just his overall style. I like that he's been able to maintain his title for so long. They he's actually been um I think you've known this before, he's actually the longest reigning Filipino champion. Mm -hmm. Of all time. Yeah, of all. Ever since he got his minimum weight belt, the way he worked it is he he never relinquished a belt before he got another one. Mm -hmm. So technically, since 2004, when he got his minimum weight belt, he's always been a world champion. Mm -hmm. So that man, that's that's pretty impressive right there. How do you so you see the Reveco fight going the distance? Um, Reveco, from what I've seen, pressure fighter. He likes to to walk forward, throw a lot of punches. Do you think that's going to make for an exciting fight? Or you think... Because Donnie Nietzsche is not really an exciting... He's a workman-like guy. He'll see scissors like a, a little bit like a surgeon. How do you see this fight going in terms of entertainment? I think it'll be pretty entertaining. I think Rebecca will just be... Well, for the most part, be coming forward. Mm -hmm. Trying to push Nietzsche's against the ropes and work on him. That's what I think he'll be doing. Trying to get harder shots in there. If he If he's smart... His best shot is to go to the body, because Nietes is really good at slipping shots to the head. Mm -hmm. And so, if he wants to have any chance of scoring points or even getting the knockout, because I saw somebody predicted him to win by knockout late. Hmm. Okay. But to well, do that, he's gotta he's gotta really push. The best chance he could have of winning is Nietes does seem to kind of simmer down a little bit towards the later rounds. Mm -hmm. I've seen people criticize him for certain stamina issues, so if maybe if Rebecca can carry some power late, that's where he can get his success. Well, there you go. So you're predicting Donnie Nietes by decision. Um, provided he wins this fight, do you think they try to match him up with either the winner of Wrong Visaya Strata, or do you think they put him in against the loser? Or I mean, how's this gonna work? So, um, the fight I've heard him. So, you know, Roman, he's supposed to come back on the undercard of Triple G Canelo. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's interesting. And the Inoue just relinquished the WBO 115 pound title. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's moving up so to 118. So I've heard that they're trying. Hmm. Isn't Inoue moving up to 118, maybe? Yes, he's actually negotiating a fight with Jamie McDonald. Right, right. So, what some I've heard some talking, and I think the WBO has addressed this as well, that they might have Nietes and Roman Gonzalez fight for the WBO super flyweight title. Nietes, Nietes if, and who? Um, Roman looks okay. good in his next fight. He didn't, yeah, but Gonzalez then he said he's not fighting Nietes right away, right? As his first fight, he's gonna fight somebody else on the yeah, possibles. he's not gonna be doing that. He, um, he denied a fight with Kalija, he denied a fight with Kalija Fi for Super Fi 2 because he wanted a tune up fight. Mm -hmm. The fight that I'm hearing the most about that could be his opponent in May is Hernan Marquez, Tyson mm -hmm. Marquez. Yeah, that's a tune up, but they haven't made yeah, it official yet. Okay, that's a that's a tune-up. Yeah, you know, it's it's not on paper. He should blast Marcus out, but he, the the guy needs a break, man. If anybody in boxing deserves a break, it's Gonzalez. Um, okay, Quadras, McWilliams, Arroyo. Uh, Quadras, either late stoppage or decision. Oh, you think he stops Arroyo? Possibly. Arroyo, Even though, you yeah. have to remember, Arroyo hasn't fought since he lost to Roman in 2016. I didn't know that. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, that was his absolute last fight. He said that I watched an interview he had with Cynthia, Cynthia Conte mm -hmm. that he was actually, he was trying to have fights set up, but mm -hmm. all of them fell through. So unfortunately, this is the first time that he's going to be fighting since his loss to Roman in September of 2016. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that could prove to be detrimental for him in this fight. But if, if he along should... with that, um, Quadras is also trans. Quadras is also what? 
he is preparing for he prepared for this fight with Abel Sanchez and Big Bear. <laughs> you think that's a plus or is that a? I think it's a big plus. Mm -hmm. You know what I would like to see? I would he like said to. That he's been... Go ahead, go ahead. Hmm, go ahead. Okay, well, real quick, I would he like to see working... Quadras yeah, tighten up his shots more, and I hope Sanchez can do that. Mm hmm. The, okay, yeah. So, so you say a, a quadras by decision. Um, you think it's going to be an exciting fight, or it's going to be one of those quadras just doing what he does, slapping. Well, not slapping, but <laughs> punching, moving away, punching. And... What the hell was that? Is that a goat? Yeah, I think he'll be throwing more like serious punches besides those flurry slaps that he has a tendency to throw. Okay, so you say decision or stop it? Now let's get down. Is late, that you? Late stop it or decision? Okay. Reverse, is that your chair making noise or is that a goat or something? That's a door. I'm about to have to go in about like a minute. Well, like, I, I haven't given you permission yet. So. Yeah, but I haven't given you permission yet to leave. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I might get back on, but I'll see you later. Well, wait a minute. So real quick, Gonzalez, I mean, Gonzalez, Estrada uh, versus uh, Rongvisai prediction real quick before you leave. Uh, Estrada decision. Estrada decision. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, reverse. Thanks for joining us, man. All right. And I appreciate the right, quick bye. predictions. I right, see you, man. All right, so there you go. Prediction. And let me tell you something. Well, I'll t we'll talk about the main event later. I want to I want to get back to the Donny Nietes thing. My prediction for Donny Nietes versus Rivetko is I think Donny Nietes is going to look good in this one. Uh, he's like I said, he's not a pressure fighter. He's not a humongous puncher. Compared to like a Gonzalez or so wrong Visay or Inoue, you know he's a workman like that guy. He's gonna outbox. He's gonna jab you. He's gonna land right hands here and there. He's gonna move in his head, bob and weave. But that being said, freaking Rebecca is gonna be putting pressure on him. So that's gonna make him look good because he's, it's a little bit like Juan Manuel Marquez. If you stayed on the outside as Marquez, yeah, he was going to sharpshoot you, maybe stop you with a punch you didn't see coming, but for the most part, it was a decision. If you went into the wheelhouse, if you went into the the danger zone against him on the inside, you pressured him too much, he broke you down with counter punches. And I'm not saying Donnie Nietes is as good as Marquez on the inside, because Marquez could really, was an underrated inside fighter, and he could break tons of guys down in there. But I think the more you pressure Nietes, the better he's going to look. So I think in Reveco, from what I've seen all his fights, he comes forward. Again, not a humongous puncher, but he's got respectable power, good snap on his shots. But he leaves himself a little too open. He gets a little too crazy. And I think that's what Donny Nietes is going to capitalize on. All right, in the chat room, people are watching the Holskin versus Smith fight. So, guys, give me a little update here. You're saying, Jehobi says that Holskin looks mad. <laughs> Covered up. It sounds like Reverse had a date with a goat. Oh my goodness. He said it was a door, but I don't know if door is the, the, the way they call, is the term they used to call goats nowadays. Man, but yeah, Reverse, you were in a big hurry, man. What What's going on? You got a big date? Something you're not telling us about? Do you have a date with a girl or do you have a date with your drug dealer? That's what everybody wants to know in the chat room. All right, so guys, obviously, let's get back to boxing here. Well, what's going on with the Holskin versus Smith fight? Before that, Jehobi said that Mick, uh, Holskin has power, but Smith can control the distance very well with his jab. Yeah, see, that's the thing. You might have power, you might have a good physical talent, but if you haven't put it all together yet, and I know, I think Holskin only has about, what, 16 or 13 professional fights? Okay, Jehobi says 3 to nothing for Holskin. What? I ah, know, Smith 3, Holskin 0. So he's got a 3 rounds to zero, nothing for Smith. Reverse says, no, that's next week. <laughs> yeah, the drug dealer's next week. Oh, is he saying drug dealer or the girl? I don't know. You tell me. All right, so I want to get back to some of the... We'll leave the whole Superfly card for a little later. I was reading the news. Rances Bartholomew says he wants Garcia, Mikey Garcia, to be more precise. He wants Mikey Garcia. Okay, I understand that. I know it, it's, it's a big fight for... Bartholomew, but how about he gets past what's his name? Relic first. He has a rematch against Relic. It was a tough fight the first time. 
fights. A lot of people feel Relic should have gotten the decision. I thought it was a close fight. I think Barthelio even landed the hardest shots, even though I think Relic at some point, if I remember correctly, stunned him. But, um, you know, Barthelio reminds me a lot of Robert Easter Jr., which is the fight I think should be taking place, really. I know Easter Jr. is at 135. Come on, work a catch without a something, PBC, because this is the fight to make two tall guys who love to fight on the inside, who have decent power, good hand speed. That's the fight I want to see. Then again, like I said, Bartholomew has to get past Relic, and I think that fight's going to be on the undercut of Maruki Garcia versus Lipinets. But it's still, come on, Bartholomew, get past Relic, and if and if you can't get the Garcia fight, somebody at PBC, please make Bartholomew versus Robert Easter Jr. It's a can't-miss action fight. You want ratings, you want a good fight, you want boxing fast talking the next day about it, Get me that fight. Get me that fight and I'll I'll sing the PBC's praises all night, all day. Whatever I gotta do. But, uh, oh yeah, you know what? Let's take a look at that 140 pound division because I always forget who's who right in there right now. And by the way, when people say, well, Terence Crawford cleaned 140 pounds, he didn't really clean 140 pounds. He took the alphabet belts, but you know top guy, anybody that's not a top guy can get a, a belt. So just because you have all the belts doesn't mean you you beat all the good guys or the best guys in the division. All right, so I got the ratings here. Jose Ramirez, who I think he's going to be taking on Amir Imam next. Crossroads fights. I love this type of fights where you have a guy who's undefeated against a former prospect. Those make for interesting fights because the, the, the prospect doesn't want to lose. Obviously, he's got that zero to protect. And the former prospect, he has something to prove. So they tend to make for exciting fights. The aforementioned Rasis Bartholomew, who I think, I hope he could still make one, a catch weight of some sort to take on Robert Easter Jr. Josh Taylor, who looked very good against, uh, what's his name, Miguel Vasquez. Not an easy guy to look good against. And Josh Taylor might just be the best of the bunch. But then again, he still has a lot to prove. Sergey Lipinets taking on Mikey Garcia next. Edward Troyanovsky, I gotta watch more of him because I'm not all that familiar with him. Although I see 24 knockouts out of 27 wins, very respectable. Julius Indongo is still there. Regis Procrias, I don't know how you spell his name. Antonio Orozco, who... Man, let me tell you, something. another one of those guys with a lot of potential, but who doesn't put it all together. Misses weight, doesn't seem to train properly. Victor Postol, again, I know a lot of people here. I know what people have said in the past and in the podcast that he's not all that good. And then you got Michael Garcia, who is top quality right there. So that's a 140 pound division. And not as wide open as the 168 pound division because you do have Michael Garcia at the top. But uh, what's covered up? He says Regis Progress versus Indongo is not confirmed as Victor Postol shit himself. Yeah, Victor Postal, what are you doing, man? I think that Terence Crawford took away all the confidence he had left. That might be the problem. Uh, what's You know, we're talking about um, wasted talent. I forget the guy's name. Last time I saw him was on the Cotto Canelo card. Um, he's the guy that me- beat uh, Miguel Herrera. Herrera. Hold on a second, let me check his name. He trains, or trained, I believe, with Fred Roach. And another guy full of talent and skill, but like Orozco, just flushing it down the drain. Let me find his name real quick. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the comments. People saying Smith is gassing. Again, if you don't want any spoilers, get out of, the, of this podcast, because I'm going to be reading. The, Frankie Gomez, thank you, Colbert. Yeah, Frankie Gomez. Let's check out his box rate. What what has he done? Because he he took Herrera to school. Not an easy thing to do. Danny Garcia couldn't do it. That other guy whom he got robbed against. What's his name? I, I'm telling you, I, you start forgetting names at a certain point. And this internet is trying to kick my ass here with the slowdown. Under coloration, as Posto literally shit himself. I'd love to see a fighter shit himself during a fight. I would pay that. That would be the, worth the price of admission or of a pay per view. And now some people say BDA, you're immature. Okay, so what? Yeah, the people that are calling me immature, 
you will be laughing right alongside me if we saw a guy shitting himself. We would laugh, we would share that moment together, and then we would probably go get a couple of beers afterwards. That's how bonds are built. Alright, so yes, Frankie Gomez, who beat in his last fight, he beat Mauricio Herrera. And that's that's been... No, hold on a second, I'm reading that wrong, hold on. And again, Herrera, not an easy guy to look good, good, uh, good against. Yeah, that was his last fight. Mauricio Herrera. And he wasn't on the Canelo undercard, Canelo code. It was actually on the Khan Canelo undercard. But still, my point remains. Frankie Gomez watched that Herrera fight. He kept him turning. He used a lot of subtle little movements on the inside. Really quality guy. But another guy who's flushing it down, the, his, his career down the toilet, man. It's like a lot of these guys are naturals at boxing. or And I, I remember, what was his name? Uh, Batistuta, I think. He was a, a, a Argentinian football player, a.k.a. soccer player in the 90s. He was sensational, one of the best in the world. And Bucho told me that he had read in an interview that the guy didn't want to be a football player. He wanted to be a, a basketball player. Because, you know, in Italy basketball is actually pretty popular so imagine that you're very good extremely good at something but you don't want to you don't enjoy that that's gotta suck and i think it's the same thing with guys like gomez and orozco all the talent and maybe gervonta davis too all the talent in the world but they can't pull it together Ahmed 92 says smith is looking average he says he wants to see Groves versus Smith. Um, Aiden Morrison says, I'm keeping it real. I hope I am. Covered up, he says, amazing talent. I saw him medal at the World Amateur Championships in Milan. Street thug, exactly. Are you talking about Frankie Gomez? Because if so, I also heard he likes to party and that he likes to... He likes that um, alcohol, I think. As long as he doesn't get into that cocaine habit that's the one that really is going to kill your reflexes real fast listen cocaine heroin those are the worst alcohol is bad too but you can get through it i mean for a little while actually but i mean you know live a clean life you got the talent you're blessed you got one of the greatest trainers in the world in your corner you have a good promotional outfit behind you what's what, what's going i would really like to know what's going on inside this guy's head and orozco too missing weight like lost of performances and no, it's just it's a shame it's a shame cover operative says Gabriel Batistuta wonderful for Fiorentina in Serie A, Serie A in the 90s he was oh cover was living in Milan back then were you working for Operation Gladio back then or was that discontinued at that point Akumi's exception says Brammer would beat Smith in my opinion but every British fighter gets hyped up and you know what now that we're talking about football it's the same thing. I remember what well, was 2010 with the British team because we're going to have another World Cup this. This is a World Cup year. And 2010, the British team, the England team, was getting overhyped. They thought they had an easy group against, what was it, Algeria? It's the United States and I forget which other country. And they were saying, oh, it's going to be easy. Okay, so yeah, easy. That's the headline. So it was England... I think Slovakia or Slovenia, one of those countries. And they didn't even qualify as number one in the group. So I, who, who was Zonzu or one of those guys has never overestimated your opponent. That's a lesson to take to heart and to keep in your mind every time you go out there in a competition. Cover up is Operation Vatican, money laundering and terrorism financing. Cover, did you have something to do with that banker that was... Italian banker that was hung or found hanging on an overpass back in the 80s or something like that. I forget the details of the, of the story. I, I know in good, uh, The Godfather 3, they, they took a little bit out of that real story. I'm starting to get scared of covered up. Let me tell you something right now. Vincent Marduk says, shout out to Vincent. He says, I just finished watching the best ever Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi is a fantastic player, man. I gotta ask you guys, who is the Lionel Messi of boxing right now? 
Is there, is there any one guy that wows you? I'm pretty sure everybody's going to say uh, Lomachenko. Luis Couture says a hung banker. No, I'm talking like he was swinging. He Somebody had asphyxiated him and he was hanging from a bridge or something. And some people said there was foul play involving some secret Vatican. Because you know the Vatican, they, they're their own government. They can do whatever they want. There's no oversight. Aiden Morrison says, everybody, make sure you like and share. Yes, thank you, Aiden. Share, 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 and uh, keep subscribing to BDA Live and to our BDA main website for all the latest up-to-date analysis and commentary on boxing. Cover Operative says, his cover was blown, so I gave the order for the banker's execution. Damn, it was actually Cover Operative that did that. It's always good to have somebody with inside knowledge. And by the way, Cover, let me ask you this, man. Because I'm reading a lot of conspiracy theories on the internet. That latest Florida shooting that happened. Was that a... Is there something weird going on there? Are they telling us the whole story? Or is your operative special ops mind or background telling you that something's fishy here? <laughs> I always like though when those people make that those videos. Because some people say that the, the school shootings don't happen. That they're all fabricated and that everybody's an actor. It's like a Twilight Zone episode. They make these videos and they put this creepy music, and then there's letters. And I, I, I can't watch those videos for more than a minute. Could they be telling the truth? Might they be right? Maybe. But could you tone it down with the production value a little bit? Either tell us what's on your mind or make a movie about it, all right? But keep it keep it a little professional. Don't, don't try to impress me. Don't try to wow me. It ain't gonna happen, all right? Vincent Marduk says, anybody that compares Cristiano with Messi doesn't know about football. Hey, listen, I'm not all that knowledgeable about either, so you would have to tell me who's better, Cristiano, Ronaldo, or Messi. Luis Catorza says, oh man, conspiracy theories. Well, I mean, what do you want from me? But that's what I've been... I was just reading about it a little bit on the internet and can't handle that shit for more than a couple of minutes. It's not for me. All right, so listen, as, as well, as long as I'm here, I'm going to talk about the, <laughs> what's covered up here saying? He says, yes, the sh latest shooting was designed to reverse a new legislation from being enacted to lobby against possession of firearms. That's that's what the guy in the video said. I don't know if it's true or not. Jehobi Mixay says, geez, Smith's nose is broken and Holkin has an iron chin so far. He can take a shot. He's a tough guy, Holkin. I've seen some of his kickboxing fights. I guess he wanted to make that boxing money, and that's why he took this fight on late notice. So, so good for him, man. I have a lot of respect for the guy. Boxing Fairy Tale says, I know you expect the earth is flat, right? Now, hey, <laughs> I never said anything about the earth being flat. But again, write Flat Earth Theory on YouTube and get a million results in there. And, and it's amazing how this flat earth phenomenon has taken over. It's exploded, man, and people get heated into heated conversations about it. It's amazing, man. I, and they're, they're, don't get it twisted. There's always been flat earthers. I remember back, you know, people have said that. People in the 70s, some people were saying the earth was flat. Then there's also the hollow earth people that say that the earth is hollow. There was a cult from some African guy, I think it was African, that said that he was in contact with beings who lived under the earth and that there was some sort of like spiders or something. I mean, it's... Everybody can come up. I'm thinking, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come up with a conspiracy theory and I'm going to get a bunch of contacts of mine to just spread the word anonymously through the internet and see if it catches up. What's that called? That website where people can spread stories? Creepypasta? Is that what it's called? I don't know exactly how that shit works, but I know people like to spread urban legends around nowadays. So it'd be interesting to see if here in BDA... You guys, help us out, you know, we mastermind a, a conspiracy theory and we put it out there and see if it sticks. Make it believable and see if, if it takes off like the flat earth. But then again, we'd have to come up with some a real doozy, all right? So yeah, keep me updated with these column versus, um, column Smith versus Holskin updates. Kuma's Deception said that the, the gap between Ronaldo and Messi has widened because Ronaldo is 33 and he's not the same player he used to be. Okay, that makes sense. Vincent Marduk says, Flat Earth, a conspiracy, please stop it. Yeah, I'm not going to get into that. I was just saying how some people... It's it's a big theory now. Big, one of the biggest out there. 
what's the I, I do have to ask what what would be the point of of, of a flat earth like why, why would they hide what, who's hiding it first of all and why but anyway again not gonna get into that I do want to talk about McWilliams Arroyo versus Quadras it's gonna be taking place apparently um, like Covert said that's the fight that's gonna be taking place Reversely said he has Quadras by stoppage now that would depend on whether McWilliams Arroyo actually shows up in shape if he shows up in shape let me tell you something about McWilliams Arroyo strong guy stout comes forward he can hit who was it in the chat room that said that the guy hits like a mule? He packs quite a punch. Again, he's not a huge puncher, but he he does. I mean, he, he's got respectable power. Uh, and what's his name? Again, I forget the name, so I'm going to have to check it out here. But McWilliam Sorroyo, again, 12 rounds against Gonzalez. And that's with a bad shoe, by the way. He had cheap shoes on. Remember, one of his soles of his shoes came undone against Gonzalez, and he still made it the distance. Okay, when he took on the Thai guy, I'm not Ren Roaring. Ren Roaring. Ren Roaring. Who beat Su Shi Ming. I think McWilliam Soroyo deserved the decision against the Thai guy. He should have gotten the decision. So you see, McWilliam Soroyo has two quality fights in there against Ren Roaring. And I, again, like I said, he should have gotten the decision in that one. And he went 12 rounds with Gonzalez. Strong guy, stout, Puerto Rican. So he's probably got some good sparring over there. And let's not forget that Quadras tends to fight. He's a cold, hot and cold fighter. He'll look good in one fight and then he'll look below his real level in another. So when he took on Gonzalez, he really stepped it up. Then he took on David Carmona. And what happened? He struggled. Carmona was hitting him to the body, doubling him over, hurting him with those shots. It, was, it turned out to be a closer fight than most people expected. So, Arroyo is a lot like Carmona. Very strong guy. Very composed, stout, and he goes to the body. Against Ren Roreng, Arroyo didn't go to the body as much as I would have loved to have seen him. Nevertheless, he is a good fighter. And, I mean, we're going to have to see, man. I mean, I think the Quadras fight is going to be entertaining. I think Quadras, and now, like, like reversely, yeah, Quadras is taking on, I mean, he's training with Abel Sanchez. <clears throat> And I hope Sanchez is tightening up his shots. Because Quadras could be hidden harder if he wanted to. But he just tends to slap a lot. Watch the Sorong Visai fight. He was landing four shots on him, but he couldn't hurt Sorong Visai. First of all, because Sorong Visai has a very good chain. But also because I got to wonder what would have happened if if Quadras would have tightened up his shots a little more. And that's going to... That ha don't forget to remind me about that when we talk about Estrada or Wrong Visai because I think Estrada might be able to hurt some Wrong Visai. But again, Quadras is a top quality fighter. He's audacious. He's not afraid to let his hands go. He's not afraid to talk. He's confident. He wants to take on the best. He wants to prove he's the best. Uh, I don't think he expected to lose against Estrada in his last fight. So he's on the comeback and it's imperative for him to look good against Arroyo. He can't afford to look bad. Because again, Carmona, he didn't look all that great. He lost against Estrada, even though he put up a good fight. And if he looks bad against Arroyo, it's it's going to make a lot of these guys in this new division gun for him. Then again, that might not be such a bad thing. Alright, so... Gotta go get more tea. People, keep it up in the chat room. Keep me updated about what's going on. And I will be right back in... Uh Let's make it um, two minutes. Why not? Two minutes? All right. I'll be right back in two minutes.
troubled waters cause I'm targeted A verbal assassin when I'm blasting Tell you something. If I'm doing this again, I'm flying solo today. Butch is not with me. Next time I'm flying solo again, I'm gonna get no even if I'm flying solo, I'm gonna get a bottle. And I know it sounds disgusting, some sort of jar. I'm gonna get a piss jar, is what I'm trying to get at. Because getting up, I'm drinking tea for three hours through doing the show. I'm drinking water, I'm drinking it's just you know, eating watermelon. I'm going to the bathroom constantly. So instead of interrupting the show, I'm getting myself a piss jar. And if anybody out there sells quality piss jars, I'm talking the ones with logo and the ones with resistant plastic, which doesn't stain. Because again, if you're juicing a, a regular jar, whether it's plastic of, or, or glass, it tends to stain a little bit in the long term. So if anybody has or retails high quality piss jars, and also maybe, you know what, while I'm there shopping for shit jars, vomit jars, you know, for, for my vomitorium, I don't know. What, 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 what's going on here? BDA... <laughs> Luis Catorza says, BDA get catheterized. Cathet Jeez, I can't spell it. Catheters cathe catheterized. I mean, listen, I'm not at that age yet. Get a milk jug. Again, that would be the easy solution. That would be a cop-out. I want to get myself a quality jug. All right, guys? So no, no milk jugs, no honey jugs, no... Uh, cans and I, I no, not a bucket. I pissed in a bucket for five years straight. Let me tell you, it's not gonna happen again. I need myself a proper container for my piss. Um, what's going on with the fight? Smith has short arms for his fight for his height. Says Luis Catorce. Hamed ninety two has his five two for Smith or six one. Boxing fairy tale says he already lands many clean and he didn't drop him. So holes can holes. Holzner has a good chin, man. I mean, I tell you, again, it was only sparring, but the way he was going at J. Leon Love is, it, it demonstrated the guy with a good chin who's not afraid to go forward or who's not afraid of getting hit. Akuma's exception says Smith should be getting this guy out of there. But again, how 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 good is Smith anyway? How big a puncher is he? Is what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> Jehovi says that um, uh, Holtz can just broke Smith's nose. <laughs> Luis Couture says the referee has a headset on. He looks like a goddamn cyborg. <laughs> Akuma's exception says, BD, are you from Montreal? From around those parts, yeah. Let's just say they speak French where I'm from. Undercover Asian says, get some diapers. Now, okay, do I look like a freak to you? I'm going to be wearing diapers. And Luis Couture says, there you go. And no, no diapers. Again, if, some, if somebody has a sensible solution to this problem and they can sell me a proper container... For my human waste, I'll give you a thumbs up, or I'll give you, I'll give you something in return. Akuma's exception asks, "Are you a Canadian Canadians fan?" No, I don't watch hockey. I don't watch hockey. I don't watch much other sports other than boxing and MMA and the occasional football, aka soccer. 
But for the most part, I, I, I got my hands full with boxing and MMA. I would be willing to get into uh, cricket. Man, those crowds go wild, man, the cricket. I'd like to understand what's going on. Those guys look like they're... The way they're geared up, it looks like they're getting ready to go to war. So I would like to see more cricket and understand it. All right. By the way, David Lemieux pound for pound number one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, apparently David Lemieux might be fighting Gary O'Sullivan on the Golovkin Canal undercut. But then again, that's just a rumor for now. I don't know if it's going to happen or not. It would be a pretty entertaining fight. That's perfect uh, comeback fight for David Lemieux because O'Sullivan is not a huge puncher. Forget about what you saw against Douglas. Douglas's resistance is just... I think it was always he never really had good resistance. I think punch resistance, but I'm not saying Sullivan sucks. But I'm just saying he's tailor made for David Lemieux. He's gonna be right there for Lemieux to hit, and Lemieux, if he hits you, you're in trouble. Now if he if he can't hit you like he couldn't against Golovkin and and, and Saunders, then he's a little bit of trouble. Dominic Sarik, shout out to Dominic says darts has brutal fans. Yeah, they do have brutal. I mean, they were they were showing it in a sports channel the other day. Darts. And the crowd was going... It, it looked. It sounded like a football crowd. They were chanting and everything. First of all, they're all drunk as fuck as well. And I think they all have... Like, they have their beer on one side and their... I think it was their pee jugs on the other. I'm telling you, these guys are seasoned professionals. They're not going to the bathroom. <laughs> Who needs to go to the bathroom when you got a dart show in front of you? These guys, they know what it's all about. Pee jugs. Pee jugs. So, but yeah, the darts... I mean, they're having a good time there. And it's just darts, for Christ's sakes. Oh shit, I, 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 I swore two times. I said shit and I said, took, took the Lord's name in vain. I, I'm gonna, oh boy, that's not good. Anyway, and the other thing about darts was that I think they have ring card girls. Well, not ring card because technically there's no ring, but they have girls that walk, you know, in skimpy outfits that walk the guys out in front of the, the, the board. And you know what happened with F1, which was that they're not gonna have girls anymore the what do they call them uh, engine not engine girls anyway they're not gonna have because it's sexist well have you ever thought about what how much money these girls make it's that's part of their income to be in there you're taking it away from them because it uh, the f1 said it's no longer part of our values well what are your values to watch a bunch of people crash into each other because you know that's the thing with f1 i know it's supposed to be more sophisticated than daytona and all that i mean not daytona of that that uh What's the American version? Uh, NASCAR and all that. But come on. At the end of the day, what's people, what are people looking forward to? A crash. Somebody to get maimed. Somebody to get burned. And I'm not saying I wouldn't look forward to, this, to, to the same thing. But I'm just saying is don't be a hypocrite. All right? And by the way, really, girls, good-looking girls walking around. Is that a bad thing? How is that a bad thing? Like I said in another podcast, are the, is the crowd throwing shit at them? Are they throwing manure and, you know urine jugs at, I mean they're not first of all they don't have urine jugs at in F1 I've checked and I've complained about it but my complaints fell to deaf ears but really what's the problem with F1 and that's why I respect Eddie Hearn who said he's not gonna get rid of ring card girls because some people were saying oh well if F1 got rid of them why doesn't boxing because it's a tradition and you ever see the smile on those girls faces I'm an expert at knowing when girls are faking it trust me I know and those girls, those ring card girls, are not faking it. They're having a good time. They like the attention. And they're getting paid. And they can go on their Instagram page and, and show the photograph that they were at the big event. And then all the other girls get jealous. I want to be a ring card girl too. Why not? I'm pretty. No, you're not pretty. Okay, what what undercover or Asian says there's a ring boy in MMA, Invicta Female Organization, and it's probably tongue-in-cheek. It's probably tongue in something, I'll tell you that much right now. I don't want to see a ring boy, okay? It, it should be kept to ring girls. I know some people are going to say, well, what about you know, homosexuals? Shouldn't they get a little eye candy as well? No. They're not the majority. The, ma the majority of people who go and watch boxing, straight people. So keep it to the straight people, all right? And no, we're not going to be, just because they're the minority, we're not going to include one ring guy for every five ring girls. It's just not going to happen, all right? It looks weird. Besides, if there really is a homosexual going to watch a boxing fight and he wants to see a shirtless guy, the boxers are already shirtless. Doesn't make any goddamn sense. Fuck you for bringing that up, by the way. Oh, wait a minute. I brought it up myself. 
Um, the ring boy is an actual UFC fighter. Okay. <laughs> First of all, the term ring boy, I don't know why it sounds extremely bizarre. Ring girl has a nice tongue, uh, ring to it. No pun intended. Ring boy just sounds weird, man. <laughs> Pavel says kickboxer's only chance right now is to meme his way to a knockout. How the hell do you meme yourself way to a knockout? <laughs> Muay Thai matches. Yeah, well, you go to Thailand, you're gonna encounter a couple of ring boys. I'm pretty sure about that in the street. And you never really find out right away it's always afterwards unfortunately but all right so keep me updated here guys what's going on with this goddamn fight and you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna have to cut this short for i'm gonna end it at 6 30 6 45 because i got stuff to do i would love to keep it longer but but uh, I, I got things pressing so i'm just gonna right away tell you about first of all adani stevenson the guy he's talking about Andrew Ward that's what I saw over at boxing scene he says I don't know if somebody asked him or if he brought it up but he says Andrew Ward he's gonna come back I know that and he's probably he's probably gonna come back at a different weight because he's never wanted to fight me uh, I, I don't know if that's true I mean I'm a rock nation and the PBC apparently they hate each other because remember rock nation Jay-Z and apparently the, the whole story was that back when Al Heyman was working in the music industry uh, he had some sort of trouble with uh, JC's wife or with JC himself. I don't know. But they're not going to work together. So that Stevenson Ward fight, it was never going to happen if Ward was with Rock Nation. But, but Stevenson obviously can sense something here about Ward. And I think we all can as well. I don't think he's going to retire. Or I should say, yeah, I'm saying Ward isn't going to retire because I don't consider him retired. This is just a layoff. He wants to see how the light heavyweight division shapes up, or he wants to get himself that big money fight against Bellew. And I say big money fight because it would make some good money for him if he fought on HBO, and if he fights in England, which, again, not going to happen because Andrew Ward only fights in the US, but, yeah, it's 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 a fight that he wants. It's like when he wanted to fight Chavez Jr. He had a hard-on for Chavez Jr. Even when Chavez Jr. was looking bad, he still wanted to fight him. <laughs> Kuma's deception says Juicy Ward is trying to fight Bevel apparently I guess the Crucible would scare him off uh, forget about Bevel I think he should take on Gvozdik that that would be a more competitive fight at this point and, and, and Bevel has to take care of Barrera first so let's not get too ahead of ourselves here although I know what you're saying Akuma you, you, you think Ward is the one who wants to fight Bevel okay Johobi says that there is it's Smith 11 rounds he's got 11 rounds to nothing so it's not looking good for Holskin, but from what I understand, he's putting up a good fight. Uh, Luis Couture says, Stevenson is dreaming if he thinks Ward would ever fight in Canada. St Ward's not going to fight in Canada. He's not going to fight in England. He's not going to fight in... He's going to stick to Vegas, Oakland, Atlantic City. Oakland, under coveration, says, the home of world boxing. Uh, at least in Andrew Ward's world. But, I, I mean, again, if, if Ward... Want, I don't consider Ward retired. I think he took an extent. I think he pulled a Floyd Mayweather 2008 to see how the division shapes up, see what happens, who are the big names, who stays out on top, let the division clear itself out, and then he'll come back. But the guy is a listen. I don't like Andrew Ward personally on a personal level. Something about him irks me the wrong way, and from what I've heard, I don't know. I heard he's pretty nice to fans though when you meet him. So again, I don't know. All I can tell you is based on what I see from him, but. He is a great fighter. And I know I've had this discussion with people here in the Hangouts and in the chat. People tell me, no, Ward isn't good. Who did he beat? Look, the guy's good. And we'll leave it at that, all right? But on a personal level, uh, I don't know. Uh, Akuma's and Deception and Get Off Me Son, shout out to Get Off Me, says that Ward is on the juice. I know Precise Presenter made that allegation. And again, we got no proof, but... Luis Couture says Akuma beat me to it about uh, the doping allegations. We can't, I, I'm not going to throw, throw around those accusations because I got no proof. But the guy looks very strong. And that's what Precise said. Apparently, Ward, part of the reason why he's taking that little break is to get his system cleared. Or actually, he's juicing now so that when he does come back, it's going to be undetected. But the, the, the positive effects are still going to be there. 
Okay, now I know probably after the fight is done, people are going to want to jump into the hangout. So let me get my prediction for Sorong Visai versus Estrada real quick. I we made over here at BDA we made two videos, so it's probably about an hour and a half total, or almost an hour and a half total if you combine those two videos, and analyzed everything: punch and power, speed, technique, chins. I'll tell you this much: Estrada does not hit as hard, nor is he as relentless as Gonzalez, nor is he as fast or mobile as Quadras. That being said, he has the best of both worlds, in a, in a sense, because he does hit harder than Quadras, and he is much faster and more mobile than Gonzalez. In other words, he can move and he can punch. He can move better than Gonzalez, and he can punch better than, than, than Quadras. And you saw how Quadras was outboxing so wrong Visa. Now, again, let me mention two things. One, the Son wrong Visa fight took place four years ago, I believe, and so wrong Visa started to come on strong. But I'll tell you this, Strada has a better tank than Quadras. And Quadras isn't bad, by the way. He has good stamina. He went 12 rounds against Gonzalez in a very tough fight with a high operational tempo that most of the fighters couldn't have matched. But Strada knows how to control the pace of fights. He has a pretty good gas tank himself. He went 12 rounds himself against a prime Gonzalez. So his gas tank isn't to be doubted. He's got very good technique. I was re-watching the Quadras fight when I was analyzing it, and it was amazing how Estrada really... I mean, the fight looked closer than it really was upon first seeing it. When I rewatched it, it was Estrada controlling the fight, parrying and blocking most of Quadras. I'll call them slaps, although they're not really slaps, but they were slaps compared to Estrada's pinpoint accuracy and his strong shots. He was snapping uh, Quadras' head back. And so Estrada knows how to control the pace, beautiful combinations from all angles, he knows how to surprise you, he feints, he can move, he can fight on the inside, this guy's the complete and total package. So Ron Visa on the other hand, is, is, he is a monster, physically. You know, I was talking about uh, Gavril, like about how you would have to kill him in order to stop him, I think Sorong Visa is made of the same stuff. If you wanted to create a team of super soldiers, these are the guys you would want, because they're not going to quit during training. I would bet good money on that. Put them through whatever training you wanted, they, they're not going to quit. And and Sonorong Visa is cut from that cloth. And the fact, again, I mentioned one of the things that makes him so tough is to, to, to hurt is because he tucks his chin in very well, and that helps him absorb the punches. Number two, he's very relaxed. Number three, he's very strong. Look at his legs. He's got that, those Muay Thai legs. Very, very strong legs, and that's where he gets his power from. He can actually become a volume puncher if he wanted to. Against against Gonzalez, his his punches started losing a little snap, so what did he do? He switched to a volume position. He started producing more output, less punching power, but just keeping Gonzalez busy. So his gas tank is pretty good. Gonzalez threw everything in the kitchen sink. And the kitchen sink, I should say. At... Uh, 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 Sorong Visai, and it was only in the last round that you started to see Sorong Visai wilt a little bit. And uh, Gonzalez didn't get the chance to do it again in the second fight because we all know what happened there. Sorong Visai knocked him out. Estrada, like I said in the film analysis, he can be open to body shots, you can hurt him to the body a little bit, but he is extremely tough. If you hurt him to the body, he's gonna come right back. So I'm gonna, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a hard one to make, it's a hard fight to call. But I'm gonna go with Estrada by decision. I think he's gonna outbox Soron Visai. And when I say outbox, I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. But I do believe he's gonna get the best of Soron Visai. I think he's gonna bank a couple of the early rounds. At some point, I do believe he will be in trouble. But inevitably, I think he gets the he gets the decision. But it's a hard fight. Hard fight to predict. Um, now, I, I don't want to sound like a negative Nancy, but the last time I was looking forward to a fight like this, or a fight that I expected to be a high action, high octane fight, was uh, Brescheld versus Mure. I thought, oh, that's a sure fight. Sure, it, that's a can't miss fight. Sure to produce action. And guess what? Brescheld threw a, a, a curveball at us and started boxing. And I said, oh boy. It it, it, it it really threw me for a loop. Kind of ruined my night a little bit, to tell you the truth. 
But again, that's to Brazil's credit. The guy decided to box. He didn't want to get in there in a slug fence against Miura. You'd have to be crazy to do it. You'd have to be Francisco Vargas to do it. You know, he's he's got the pulse of steel. He wanted to get in there on the inside against Miura. But um, again, so maybe Estrada doesn't fight as all out as I think, even while on the back foot. But I still think he's going to be able to, to produce some good output, some good fun moments for everybody. Ultimately, though, however, I think he outboxes Sorong Visa. But Sorong Visa is going to make it tough, man. Sorong Visa, another dimension, he's a lot like Miura in the toughness department. The punching power, which isn't quite snapping punch. Really more of a thotting type power. Especially compared to to guys in that division. But again, I think Sorong Visa is more skilled than... What's his name? Then um, Miura and a better chin as well. Because Miura has been stopped twice. Then again, no, yeah, yeah, I will say he's got a better chin. Because he went for a while there. 12 rounds against Gonzalez, took everything Gonzalez had to throw. And, uh, and uh, you know, took out Gonzalez in the second in the rematch. And he took a lot of good flush punches from. Quadra, so I'm expecting an interesting fight in there. And I'm expecting someone Visa to be able to take the shots. All right, what's going on here? Um, in the chat room, people are still watching the column Smith fighting as Holskin. Let's see what people are saying. Luis Blas says Holskin has better technique than Eubank Jr. <laughs> Mark Funk says Brammer would beat Smith's ass. Jehovah Mixay says Holskin versus Eubank would be a competitive fight. Precise Punchers says or quit late. Jehovah says I think Holskin would win. Under cover he says Holskin look good. Is he normally a 168 pounder? Who took who took the decision? Is that has the decision been uh, announced? By the way, I think at this point it's become quite apparent that George Groves is going to be the, the the favorite to win the Super Middleweight tournament. But again, what exactly is the point of this 168 pound tournament? Because none of the biggest names. Are involved in it. There's no Uskatewi, there's no Durrell, there's no, uh, you know, Surdo Ramirez, there's no Benavides. <laughs> I don't really get what, I mean, I guess it's just for bragging rights, domestic bragging rights. All right, so don't keep me in the in, out of the loop, guys. What's going on? Is, is, the, is, is the decision, has the decision been announced? Yeah, that's the thing. Jehovi says five days notice for Holskin, and he still gave Smith. But then again, I mean, do we give Smith credit for taking on a guy, a tough guy on short notice? Or do we say, fuck, he should have taken this guy out because he was on short notice? See where I'm going with this? I don't know. You tell me. You tell me, man. I mean, I don't... Or maybe I'm st I'm talking bullshit. Ah, shit. Ooh, I was gonna I was gonna swear twice there. I was gonna swear twice there again. It's not necessary to lay a foul tongue on me, my friend. Yeah, I know, but hey, listen. Okay, so precise puncher, I think he's giving me the cards. 118, 110, 117, 111 twice for I'm assuming for Smith, right? <laughs> Under coveration asks, is Smith getting booed? They're fighting in England, right? You know, normally even if you take on a guy late notice. As long as you were able to, as long as you were able to 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 put up a good fight, normally you shouldn't be getting booed. Precise punches. It's a good tournament. BDA. Really, it's, it's a good tournament. I mean, I'm, it's good, but it doesn't involve the best. So, again, I reiterate my point. What's what's the point of this tournament? I guess I'm I'm, I'm over analyzing it. It's just for good old fun. Why not? They're boxing fights. That's that's really what matters at the end of the day. But yeah, tell you, man. Super flight card, super flight card. It's gonna be a very interesting fight, and it, you know what? It's I've, I've been reading the comments for the videos we did about Estrada versus Orangvisa. First of all, a lot of comments from Thailand that I can't understand. They get that weird language over there in Thailand, that that weird writing. And you know, you got Chinese, you got Japanese, but Thai, it, it they got that those weird curves, and it. it's really a good looking good looking letters. But they threw me for a loop off at first. Um, but but the people are split, man. And as always, 
as is normally the case. Most of the Mexicans are rooting for Estrada. They're picking him to win. Most of the Thais are, are picking uh, Sorong Visay. I would like to know how big a star Sorong Visay is in Thailand. Somebody out there could give me a breakdown of how famous Sorong Visay is. I'm curious about that. Okay. Again, I was reading the news and uh, under cover it says, my Thai students don't recognize him. All right, so I guess, well, first of all, how old are your students? If they're four years old, then they wouldn't be surprised if they don't know who he is. Chris Gonzalez, shout out to Chris. He says he must be a mini Manny Pacquiao out there. Apparently not, man. Apparently he's not that. Well, then again, if he wins this fight, he could become, he could, he could maybe raise his profile over there a little bit. Uh, Pavel asks, is boxing even popular in Thailand? That's a good question. They speak Pho in Thailand. See, that's the thing. I was saying Thai. I knew it wasn't, or I had an inkling that it wasn't Thai. Undercover Asian says they're in their 20s. Now, Undercover, what exactly do you teach over there? I mean, don't give us, they just give us an, like an overall, is it sociology? Is it social sciences? Is it, let me tell you something. Oh, shit. Okay. If I were, had 20-year-old students, I, I don't know how I'd be reacting, man. I'd be telling the 20-year-old female students, hey, listen, you want a little extra credit? You know how this works. You get you want the grade? You got to come into my office. Closed-door policy at all times. I was reading the news. De La Hoya. Canelo came out a week, uh, last week. He says he wants, he's, he's, he's not going to leave it up to the judge. He's going to KO Triple G. And now De La Hoya came out and he reiterated the same thing. He says, yes, we're going for a knockout. First of all, before you even start talking about knocking Triple G out, you better start talking about how you're going to beat him. Because let me tell you something, Canelo. You didn't beat him the first time. And he knows it. That's why he was so pissed off after the fight. People were booing him and he knew why. Because he didn't deserve the decision. And, and, and he's a very popular guy, Canelo. But one of the, the things that makes him so good as a boxer is because he's very... Not very, but he's arrogant. You have to be a little arrogant to become this good. But he will not admit that he, the only time he admitted he lost was against Mayweather. And then again, if if, if he wouldn't, if he would have refused to admit it, he would have really come across as a fucking nut job. I cursed again. But anyway, um, against Golovkin, though, I, does he really believe he won? I mean, he didn't. The, the thing that impressed me more about the most about Canelo in that fight was that he didn't get hurt. Normally, Golovkin either hurts you or drops you during the, the fight. Even if he goes 12 rounds like he did against uh, Daniel Jacobs. Or even if he doesn't drop you, like I said, he at least stuns you. He stuns you like he did against Rosado and like he did against Kell Brook. But Canelo, he couldn't even stun him. That's to Canelo's credit and to, that speaks volumes about his defense and his chin. But I'm telling you, Canelo, I agree with most everybody else, Canelo didn't win that fight. The most you could have given him was a draw, and even then that was a gift based off of the scorecards. But then again, he doesn't control the scorecards, so what do you want from, from him? But he's talking knockout. Both guys were very slippery in that fight. By the way, I gotta ask you guys, um, I wrote Canelo Triple G film analysis on YouTube. I didn't find any film analysis. Maybe I, was, I wasn't looking properly but if you do make a film analysis now can you get away with it without it getting pulled or is it still too early to do a film analysis let me know in the comments meanwhile speaking of comments let's see pe people saying uh extra credit i did actually she was pretty open nobody treated her. I thought they were talking about that teaching 20 year olds a lot of Mexicans, Tube says, Tube says, a lot of Mexicans are pro Triple G. Well, yeah, they are because, I mean, he has, he's in action. Listen, Mexican Mexican boxing fans, doesn't matter if, the, if you're Mexican or whatever, like most fans out there, they don't care where you are from as long as you fight and you keep, you know, provide some good entertainment. That's what people care about. Keep the Maggie on me. Shout out to Keep the Maggie. Says, Nello said the same shit going into the first fight. Exactly. He said the same thing in the first fight. He says, oh, I'm going for the knockout, blah, blah, blah. No, didn't work out. Pavel says, yeah, I bet there's no stigma in being trans. <laughs> They're talking about Thailand. Jehobi mixes Triple G versus Canelo 2 will be the exact same fight, except Triple G will fix that right hand that he kept missing. Man, he, that, that right hand was missing by inches. Good job from uh, Canelo for slipping it, but I, split second timing, man. And, and if, if Golovkin just gets lower in this fight because of age or whatever, then it's, it's not going to get any better. 
Luis Couture says Canelo has a huge head. He does have a pretty big head, man. He's built like a block, that guy. His body is built like a cinder block and his head as well. They should call him Block of Canelo, you know? Block of Canelo or something, because he's he's a strong guy. Jehovah mixes as he'll mix it in with the straight right and right hook. Fam Oli, shout out to Fam, says Canelo will win the rematch. Hmm. Okay, so we got somebody picking Canelo here. Most people aren't picking Canelo based on the first, based off of the first fight. Most people think that uh, Triple G enjoyed the technical advantage, and so that f stands to figure in the rematch as well. Jehobi Mix says, BDA Matthew Fouts made a film analysis of the first four rounds. Look at his intro. I think that's what helped him not to get striked. What do you mean? Just the, fr just the fact that he did. The first of all, if I do a film analysis, I'm not going to analyze the entire entire rounds. I'm just going to pick little spots. Uh, and by the way, Matthew Fouts, I've been meaning to invite him. I haven't contacted him, but I'm, 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 I don't know if he's listening. I hope he's listening. But you know, if Matthew, if you ever want to come on the show, man. Let's shoot the show. I want to talk more boxing and less, you know, drama of, of what goes on around the, 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 the YouTube boxing community. Because there was a lot of drama these past few weeks. Normally, BDA is like Switzerland. We, we try to be neutral here and just stick to boxing. Precise Punch says, Canelo talks too much. Skinny jeans. Yeah, he wears skinny jeans. I mean, this guy, he's riding horses in skinny jeans. He doesn't look good. Luis Catorza says, got to run. Farewell. All right. See you, Luis. Undercover Asian says, heard that Canelo is slimming down. Is he? And that would be good, man. That would be good. That That's a, that's the first place where you got to start. Lose a little bit of that muscle mass, increase your muscle endurance and your stamina, and you're good to go. Because really, if you think about it, if he would have improved his, his um, punch output in the first fight, things would have gone a lot more different. Could have maybe even pulled the, the, the fight off by a couple of points. I don't know. I guess we'll see in the rematch. Pavel says, I don't expect Triple G winning legitimately. Ginger horse fuck. <laughs> ginger, ginger horse fuck. He fucks horses. Is that what you're getting at? <laughs> or or does Canelo fuck the horses? The, who do the ho horses fuck him? Like that video of that guy who got fucked to death by a horse. Ugh. The things you find on the internet, let me tell you. Precise Punch says, it should be a 15 rounder. Yeah, good luck with that. Boxing Fairy Tale says, just read a story on Sorong V size similar to Pacquiao. Poor by. Poor guy. I think he's saying poor guy. Hunger almost died. Oh, gee, you're saying he almost died of hunger? Jeez. He traveled 100 kilometers to the capital at 13 years old to try to find a shitty job. My God. I'm telling you, that's why the guy doesn't quit. You grew up in that type of scenario, man. You are not going to quit. Family says, Canelo doesn't have the fear in him anymore. He'll win the rematch. Alright, that's enough of that. Nathan Glidewell says Triple G won the lame way, he just came forward more and was more active. Is that the lame way? There's no real... Some people have the philosophy of there's no such thing as lame winning, only winning. But I do agree with that. He won more based off of that activity more than actual... You know, he didn't dominate Canelo, let's put it that way. But he deserved the win. He should have gotten the win. Undercover Asian says, if you want to see a fighter really gassing, look at Stipe Miocci against Naganu. Naganu is stumbling because he blew his wad. He, yeah, that guy, Naganu, huge guy, a lot of mass on him. I'm, I'm actually surprised that Miocci didn't stop him because Naganu was gassed from the second round on. Jehobi says, well, if he slims down, he's talking about Canelo, I guess. Can he take the punch? I think the size helped him in the first. You know what? That's actually a good point. I will say that Canelo is very slippery, sensational chin, a very strong chin, durable. I think it's it's the neck muscles that that help at that point. I don't think it's so much if he loses some arm muscle or some muscles in the arm, I should say. I think that that would be a good thing. Just keep that that neck muscle. He should be all right. And by the way, uh, Pucho retweeted something that uh, Victor Conti said about how a lot of people say, oh, uh, Canelo's getting tested, good for him. And he says, no, he's not getting tested. He's doing it for two months, which which is like a, a huge hole in testing. In other words, what Victor Conti is saying that he could be juicing. It's very easy to juice and go on the testing for two months and, and make it seem as if, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, 
I'm a virtuous guy. I'm getting tested. No, you're, you're really not. Year-round testing. And even that, from what I remember from people saying, it's not even that effective. If people want to cheat, they'll cheat if they have the resources. Uh, Undercover Asian says, I'm, I'm convinced Canelo got wobbled by a jab. Well, I'm going to rewatch the fight and see if I can see that. Tube says, G Triple G will make Canelo no mass. Precise Puncher says, Canelo was hurt several times. Okay, I mean... Maybe I'm missing something here. I didn't see that. Uh, Luis Blanc says Canelo wants that extra weight to take shots better. I believe, again, that's something that could be, could be true. Undercover agent says slimming down is a double-edged sword. Again, he's repeating what other people are saying, which I think is, I think you guys have a point, man. Canelo needs to lose an arm if he wants to keep making 160. Precise says every A side juices. Tube says Andrew Ward is the juiciest of all juicers. Is he really the juiciest of all juicers? I don't know. Actually, I'm scratching my head here, wondering who juices. Who, well, first of all, I'm not saying that anybody's juicing, by the way. It's pure speculation. We're speculating here. Chris Gonzalez says, "What percent of boxers would use steroids?" Oh, listen, I'm not gonna get into steroids again. But uh, but it's a good question though. Family says, "Triple G has to go to the body to win. He can't be shy to land just less than 110 body shots." Conti says that precise puncher says that Conti says that 90 percent of boxers juice wow Jehobi Mixay says Canelo was stunned a few times by a few punches he got stunned in the ninth by a jab all right now we're now we're gonna get into semantics here because to me you can use different words for diff like for example if you say he was hurt well what does that mean for example Jehobi says stunned to me stunned and you can see it in slow motion oftentimes when you're re-watching a fight when a guy gets punched and he sort of blinks he doesn't wobble he doesn't fall but you can tell that for a split second he wasn't there anymore. To me, that's stunned. Wobbled, obviously, we all know what that means, is when the legs turn to spaghetti and you do that baby deer dance. And then, of course, hurt is, is wobb being wobbled or, or almost when your knees buckle and you almost touch the ground. But I didn't see Canelo being buckled. I didn't see him getting a wobble against Triple G. I think he did get stunned a little bit by that big overhand right when they were exchanging shots in the... He was on the ropes. I think it was the fourth, fifth, or sixth round, somewhere around that. Undercover races. Canelo was wobbled by a jab. Again, I'm gonna rewatch the fight and I hope. Give me a timestamp, by the way, if you can, please. Give me a timestamp and I'll, I'll rewatch the fight then, and I can, that way I can see it more easily. Undercover races. This could have been because he moved back at the same time. Precise Puncher says, to me, hurt is when a shot takes something out of you. Yeah, that's a good definition. Like, when it takes something out of you. Like, because sometimes people don't realize it, but a big punch that snaps your head back actually takes stamina away from you as well. Jehobi says, beginning of round nine, first minute, I think. Kaiser Koba, shout out to Kaiser, says, I agree with BDA's definition of stunt. The only stun in that fight, I think, was at the start of the six. When he got caught throwing, he immediately backs up to regain himself. Boyd Outlaw, shout out to Boyd, says, shout out from Thailand. Ah, a Thai person. Very good. We're mixing it up here. Undercover Asian says, that's what I saw too early in round nine. Precise Punch says, makes you change what you were doing. Fam always says, Kaiser Koba, Triple G has to take those risks. And that's the thing, because, man, I, like I said, both guys were very slippery in that fight. The only way, really, Triple G was able to get an advantage was based off of his punch output. Because neither guy was really landing cl clean shots. And th the thing that made me laugh was how Canelo was really, he's a counterpunch. Natural counterpunch. And you, he was doing everything right. He, I, I saw what he was trying to do. And I saw the openings that he saw, like, that, that, that I know what he was trying to attempt, but Triple G is slippier, I'm going to use the word even though I don't like it, slicker than his sims. He's slick. He's got his hands up, but he rolls with the, sh he rolls the shots off his shoulders, but he's not doing technically the shoulder roll, you know, with the Philly shield. He, he's got the standard boxing guard, but he's able to roll shots. They don't, they grace off his shoulder, they don't hit his chin, they'll hit the top of his head. He'll back up at the, at the perfect moment when a guy throws a 1-2. It's a, Canelo couldn't land as easily. I'm pretty sure Canelo thought, okay, Golovkin's going to come at me and I'm going to pick him off. There's a big difference between James Kirkland's uh, uh, 
approach, which is to just jump on a guy and throw punches nonstop, a guy like that, Canelo can can take out easy. Golovkin, on the other hand, that's another proposition. At the same time, Golovkin was very reluctant to engage Canelo for too long because, again, Canelo was missing himself by inches. So it was a very competitive fight, man. And anybody that tells me that these two guys aren't good or that they're overrated, uh, I'm telling you, I'm hankering to do a film analysis and really show some of the nitty-gritty, some of the more less... less some of the more overlooked aspect of, of both guys' game and the way they really matched up in that fight. It was beautiful to watch, really. It wasn't the most entertaining fight. Would I have liked to have seen a Hagler Hearns type of affair? Absolutely. But this one was it, it was what it was. And it was a it was an entertaining fight. But then again, you know, Trip de la Oya and Canelo talking knockout. Mm. How about you try to beat the guy first? Figure out how to beat him properly, and then we'll talk knockout. I, I also on the news, reversely mentioned Jamie McDonald. Supposedly, a fight is in the works against Inoue. Jamie McDonald, if you remember correctly, he fought Tomoki Kameda twice. Kameda, Japanese fighter, just like uh, Inoue. He's part of that famous Kameda family of fighters. And the first fight, he was able to drop... McDonald, it seemed like he had McDonald out gun in the first couple of rounds, but then McDonald again, proving that sometimes a good chin, stamina, and just wanting it more got him the win. They took, they, they, they tangoed again, rematch again. McDonald came out with the win, and it was interesting. I was re watching that fight. I haven't finished re watching the rematch, but I'm reading the comments on YouTube from the PBC's uh, channel where they posted both fights that the, the commenters are split. Some people say McDonald shouldn't have gotten the decision. They're saying Kameda got robbed. Other people say, no, 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 it was the right decision. But I'm, I'm eager to, to rewatch the fight. And again, a very good fight. McDonald is a very well-schooled guy. He looks as thin as a pencil, but obviously he can take a punch. He's very strong. Don't judge him based off of his body size. And I know some people are going to think, well, Inoue, the monster, he, he packs a punch. He's going to break McDonald in half. I don't, I don't know. McDonald is very good. Without a doubt, he would be the best opponent of Inoue's career. And at a new weight division as well. So I'm looking forward to that fight a lot, man. Hopefully it happens. Uh, probably going to happen in Japan. Because really, that's where the money is. McDonald isn't a big star in his native UK. So they're probably going to have to do it in Japan. The reason why I don't want to... Uh, see it in Japan is because of the time delay, you know, the time difference, and if it happens on a Sunday, I could get up on 5 a.m. for a Sunday, why not? I'd be willing to do that. Or, or, at what time, let's say I find Japan is at midnight over there, the main event, so that means here would be what? It's like a 12 hour difference or something like that? I mean, we'll see. But man, an exciting fight. It's a shame in a way moved up in weight Especially with all the big fights there are to make a 115, but at 118, let's go down and check out those trusty Ring TV <laughs> ratings. I'm again, Ring TV, I, I'm never gonna forget when they had Broner number, what was it, five or six pound for pound? Absolutely disgusting. But then again, I, I think we can all, we all make mistakes. I can overlook those mistakes. I am a generous. And forgiving person. All right, so here we have the Omar Narvaez is still at ranked as in the what, what? What has this guy done since he lost to Inoue? Did he beat some prospect or something? And that's why they're keeping him in the top ten. Let's check it out. Omar Narvaez, baseball catcher. Is that right? Okay. Okay, so since losing to Inoue, he's actually racked up, raked up some wins. First of all, he lost to Inoue in 2014. Has it, I didn't realize it was four years ago already. My goodness. All right. So he's got some very wins. He beat Nikolai Potapov, who was undefeated. So I guess that's you know part of the bulk of his wins and the fact that he got an undefeated guy in his record is partly, I guess, the reason why he's still ranked in there. Paul Butler from the UK, ranked number nine. Emmanuel Rodriguez from Puerto Rico, undefeated, 17-0. Lee Haskins, tough guy for everybody. Liborio, Liborio Solis, who I believe got into a no contest against McDonald in his last fight. 
Zanad Zakiyanov from Kazakhstan. 27, two wins. Uh, just, but just based off the fact that he's from Kazakhstan, I'm pretty sure people are think he's a monster. Juan Carlos Payano from the D Republic, Dominican Republic. Ryan Burnett, 18 and 0. Jamie McDonald's on it. And Shinuke Yamanaka. Shinsuke Yamanaka. So that that's actually the fight to make. If he do, if Inoue gets past McDonald, nice little Japanese derby against the number one guy in the division. So I guess can everybody can see what fight they're angling for. A 118 pounds. All right, so people in the chat room are still talking about Triple G versus Canelo, the rematch, and why not? It's a very good fight. Precise punches says Triple G, Pavel says kind of undercover. If you present your back deliberately, you deserve to get punched in the kidneys. I've always agreed with that. It's protect yourself at all times. And if you're turning against your opponent, you deserve to get punched in the back, kidneys, whatever. Same thing goes for if you're dipping too low, you know, James Stoney used to do that sometimes again. Like against Samuel Peter, he would dip down and he would expose the back of his head and Peter would punch him and the referee would warn Peter. But I'm thinking also, you know, if you're dipping and turning your head, you deserve to get hit in the head. Protect yourself at all times. Don't start twisting and, 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 and you're not Johnny Cash, right? Stop twisting around and face the crowd. Family says, well, they call Triple G the next Chavez. He's got a show with the body work. It was all about taking the risk, in my opinion, for Triple G. And this is something that I said in the build-up to the Triple G Canelo fight. Triple G has been compared to Chavez a lot, which I can see the comparisons, but Chavez, for the most part, could stay in the pocket head-to-head. -head. Triple G still has some of that European schooling inside of him, which is he prefers to fight at a distance. Or he'll go inside, and if he does go to the body, he'll go right back, measuring with his jab at a, measure, at a jabbing distance, work off of that, and then go back in again, and then go back out he doesn't stay in the pocket for a sustained amount of times. Even like, for example, when he had Canelo in the ropes, on the ropes, I should say, he wasn't staying there. He would get back at a, at, a, at a proper range, go back to his jab, restart, and then go back in and try to get a big shot with the right hand or a hook to the body. And it's interesting, both guys did a very good job of blocking body shots. Extremely good job. If you want to know how to block body shots, watch that fight again. Really superb defensive skills from both guys. Kaiser Kobe says exactly under coveration. It's like if you duck below the waist and you get hit behind the head, it's your own fault. Exactly. I agree with that. Je uh, Jesus Rodriguez Vidal says Canelo is going to land some good looking counter and take the round. It seems against Canelo, jabs don't count. <laughs> yeah, the judges, they tend to overlook those jabs. I get some pretty bad jabs like Lara don't count, but fuck, Triple G's jab have the power. Pavel says Kaiser just like Eubank. Just like Cuban did. What? Oh, okay, he's saying about how if you duck below the waist and you get hit. Okay. Kaiser Kobe says, and barely any warnings for it. Terrible refereeing in that fight. Precise punches says, Narvaez wins in Argentina are questionable unless you saw the fight. Yeah, I haven't seen his fights. See, I haven't seen any of his fights since the Inoue loss. Jehobi Mix says, Canelo kept twisting his hips. People were saying that's his good defense, but that's just cancer stuff. What does that mean? Cancer stuff. Canelo kept twisting his hips. People were saying that's his good, his defense, but that's just cancer. Anyway, I hope you can, if you get a chance to uh, clarify what you just said, because I don't understand that comment. Las Vegas Boxing Channel says, what time is fight is the fight starting at? 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time on HBO, and I believe it's a triple header. And from what I've heard, it's going to be Quadras Arroyo, Donnie Nietes, Reveco, and finally the main event between Sovereign Visa and Estrada. I don't know if Beloria is going to be in there. I don't think they're going to do a quadruple card. It seems like it's going to be more a three-fight card. Precise much as we don't fight, bro. We don't watch fights. We just pretend. <laughs> Undercover agents, I offer free ESL lessons. What the hell is ESL? Extrasensory linguistic lessons? Is that what you're saying? Your comments are confusing me. And let me tell you something. You guys know I'm confused enough already. So why do you keep insisting on confusing me? It's not right. It ain't right. This 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 is the way you guys sound. I mean, this is the guy the way you you guys write. That's how you write. That's what I that's what I hear when I when I read and 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 I try to imagine what it would sound like. Make your comments precise, compact, and readable, please. 
I don't have my pee jokes with me, so you gotta cut me some slack. Kaiser Cobb says, what is everyone's pick for Strata vs. Wrong Visai? I'm going with Strata by, by unboxing, I mean by decision. I think he's going to unbox for Wrong Visai. Precise Punches says he's got Wrong or a Strata. What do you mean you got Wrong or a Strata? You gotta pick one. Pavel says, Mr. Psycho TKO's a Strata in the second half. Ooh. Let me tell you, if, if he knocks out a Strata, that's bona fide pound for pound material right there. Bona fide. Nathan Glidewell says Canelo's upper body movement is very good though. He gave Triple G tons of problems. Trying to land Triple G struggle with Kasim Uma's upper body movement as well. Yeah, he did struggle in that in the Kasim Uma fight. What was that? About uh nine years ago? Something like that. Alright, so I tell you but then again, like I said, I got destroyed by decision. And I can't believe Estrada has been on the, on the championship scene since 2012. It's already been six years, man. Wow. Okay, let's see what else. I wanted to talk about. All right, so I talked about Jamie McDonald against Inouye. That was a good fight. Canelo, Darrell training with... By the way, Darrell says his grandfather, or his uncle, I think, has dementia. Was it his uncle, or is he he's talking about his grandfather? I think one of them, one of his relatives has dementia. And I don't know if it's the uncle, the one who punched Uskateregui. But again, uh, just because you have dementia is not ex an excuse to punching people. Then again, if it could be an excuse, if it was an acceptable excuse, wouldn't you wouldn't you pray for a little dementia just so you could go around punching people in the face? So you see, there's an upside to everything. There's a silver lining to every situation in life. Same thing with dementia. Hey, if you get dementia, you get to punch people in the face for a living. So yeah, that's about what I got here for this fight. Or for this podcast, I mean, I talked about Benavides and talk about De La Hoya and Canelo and all that. Okay, what, what are people saying? On the cover agent, says Estrada gets... Okay, Beyond Adlo has Sarang Visay. On the cover agent, has Estrada getting dropped. They, uh, Jehobi Mixes says they sparred Can with Canelo to practice for the Uma fight. Oh, he's talking about Triple G. Yeah, I think that was, so that was a 2011 when Canelo was sparring against Triple G. It was either 2010 or 2011, depends. I think it was Doug, Doug Fisher who got that legendary article about their sparring sessions. So I, I got to check that out to see the date. Uh, Fambaldi says Estrada is getting stopped. Ooh. Darth Vader, shout out to Darth, says, what's the topic? The topic is I'm about to get out of here and we're just getting predictions for Estrada versus uh, Sorong Visay. Avery plays base. Shout out to Avery. Says it was Darrell's uncle who punched Uskatewi. Yeah, and, and does he have... Is he getting dementia? Somebody can clarify for that for me. Undercover Asians is in the end. All the fans win in the Sorong Visa is Strada fight. Darth Vader says Strada beats Sorong Visa and that boxes him. Long as he doesn't stay in the pocket too long. Where he can get time during exchange. That's the very good point. Because again, uh, Sorong Visa is... Uh, I pointed at that in the... In the film analysis he can punch in between your shots because i gotta remind you guys the guy doesn't care about getting punched he goes in there and he's already expecting to get punched so you can punch him all you want but he's got his chin tucked he's got his eyes on you and he's gonna catch you with a big left either to the head or to the body and those f to the body are gonna wear you down precise punches the rose excuse is always a medical condition <laughs> but uh, it's true pavel says okay going right yeah. Precise Punch says, Skate, we should have should fight fat, should fight the fat uncle. By the way, what happened to the uncle? Did he get in trouble legally? Uh, is he no longer allowed in the I'm pretty sure he not, he's no longer allowed in corners. Undercover Asian says, Thanks everyone, have a good start of the fight. Pavel says, Peace, bro. Precise says, Peace. All right, so listen, guys, I got some stuff to do. I would love to stay here and talk more, but I gotta go. You know what? Might, might. And I say might, but I, I, I want to do it since we didn't do a midweek podcast. But do one tomorrow at around 4 p.m., you know, same time. Sounds good to everybody. I'd be willing to do one. Why not? Oh, Darth Vader says, are you going to be streaming again later today? Depends on what time the fights end. I got to tell you, sometimes I'm, I'm, I've always wanted to do a late night stream. But then the fights end too late. I mean, you gotta remember, I'm over here at the East Coast, and the fights sometimes they land at 12, 30, 1 a.m. But the worst case scenario, maybe I'll do, uh, in the future, I'll do a one-hour post-fight podcast. Live podcast. Worst case scenario, we'll do it on Sunday. And 
if we do Saturday, Sunday, as long as we're doing two days in a row, why not do Wednesday? Keep the Wednesday midweek podcast as well. We really have nothing to lose. And uh, I want to I wanna start, don't forget to subscribe to BDA, our sister channel, the, the main one, BDA Boxing and BDA Live, which is this one where we hold the live podcast. And Bucho was working on Second Renaissance, which is our third channel, but it's still not operational. But that's where we're going to hold non-boxing podcasts. Because again, a lot of interesting guys out there. I love talking with people. Uh about non-boxing stuff but then again if i start talking non-boxing on this podcast then people in the chat room start saying talk about something else just i mean stay stick to boxing stick to boxing so why not bring it over to second renaissance and we'll talk about everything else and uh so that's about it guys so let us know what you thought about this in the comment section keep letting us know we always appreciate the comments we always learn from the comments don't forget to like and subscribe we'll see you on the next one folks Take care. Enjoy the fights. Thank you for watching, as always, guys. Shout out to... Oh, you know what? Last thing, last thing. Shout out to everybody in the chat room. Boxing Fairy Tale, Pavel, Precise Puncher, Nathan, Darth Vader, Akuma's Deception, Tubes, Luis Catorce, Undercoveration, did I already mention him? Hamed as well, who was in here for a while. Reverse Lee, who was here for a couple of minutes, gave us his prediction. And if you have get a chance before the fight, watch his Donny Nietzsche's breakdown. Shout out to Get Off Me Son. Shout out to Boxing Fairy Tale, to Luis Blatt, to Jehovah Mixay, Chris Gonzalez. Who else am I missing? Mark Funk, keep that Maggie on me, Tubes. Coxie, who was also here as well. Guys, Rod T. Davis, thank you everybody again. Shepherd of Sons just came into the shout, uh, I mean the chat. Shout out to Shepherds. You guys know who you are. The list is too long to, to, to call, but you guys make this show. We'll see you on the next one, folks. Take care.